High five in hands, Christian Andersen. Just how much of him can we find here in Copenhagen? And why did he come to the capital, to the King's Garden? Was it the royalty? Or maybe art and culture? So I'm going to start our adventure on Hans Christian Andersen in the Town Hall Square. Left hand side, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Let's take a look inside. So Hans Christian Andersen was actually born in Odense, which is about 104 kilometers away from Copenhagen. His father was a cobbler and they lived in a small house. The man worked with his hands and he used to build Hans toys, a little theater. At the age of seven, he took him to the theater and he also gave him the book Arabian Nights to read. And so Hans became interested in live entertainment. So this is Hans Christian Andersen, the young boy and his father who died when Hans was only 11 years old. And here at Ripley's is really the only place that gives you this story of Hans growing up. Because in Odense, there is his original house, but there's not much there. Hans Christian Andersen left Odense and came all the way to Copenhagen to try and become an actor. We could say this wonderfully ornate theatre was where Hans Christian Andersen's dream started and ended because he was desperate to be a performer, to be an actor. And in fact, the pressures on him made him somewhat suicidal as a young man. Over the road is this wonderfully big supermarket or department store. It's called the Magazine de Nord. But back in Hans Christian Andersen's day, it was the Hotel de Nord. And this is where he lived. Come with me. So this is a department store, third floor. And it can change at the moment. It's coffee and mixers, but you're looking for this door. This is what you're looking for. Come on, follow me. Squeaky floorboards. You're looking for this door. He actually lived here. That was his stove. This was his room when it was a hotel. And that was his bed. It probably wasn't the most expensive room in the hotel. It is an actual attic room. But Hans Christian Andersen actually lived here and wrote the first of his fairy tales here. This has probably been put here for effect, but hey, it doesn't matter. But the room is actually original. So Hans Christian Andersen was bullied at school, but fascinated by the live junglers and entertainers that came through Odense. He did get in as a singer, failed after a while because his voice broke. And then Jonas sent him away to have an education. Or was that the reason? Was it because he'd fallen in love with Jonas's daughter, Louise Collin? He didn't enjoy school or college. He really felt he didn't need to go there. But he must have learned something. Maybe college actually polished his natural ability as a writer and artist. This is him cutting out shapes with scissors, which he loved to do. So what Ripley's does is it really gives you an insight into his life. Fantastic. This is really the Disney image of Hans Christian Andersen. The statue down by the banks is a different story. Let's go down and see if Jean's found the statue. You'd almost guarantee that most people have seen the film and not many read the book, which is much darker and it's almost reflective of some of the dark tragedy that occurred in his life. It's not Disney-esque at all. It's probably more like the book. If you have an interest in Hans Christian Andersen, then you've really got to come to Ripley's. This is the Shepherdess and the Chimney Sweep. To say that Andersen was a prolific writer is an understatement. So just some of his stories are represented here at Ripley's. Ripley's have told us that Hans Christian Andersen was inspired by Tivoli. We've come down here to Nighthaven because this is certainly where it all happened back in the day. Hans Christian Andersen actually lived here at number 20. That's where he wrote The Princess and the Pea, Big Claws and Little Claws, and The Tinderbox. He also lived for two years at number 18, where there's now a souvenir shop. I told you I'd find him, the man himself. And he's going to read us a story now. They claim he wrote The Little Mermaid here at number 18. 
One more house to visit in Nyhaven before we finish. So the last stop here is number 67 where he lived for 20 years, probably the least friendly and the least inviting of all of the places we've been, but it's a cafe and a sandwich bar now. So Nyhaven is a very big part of Hans Christian Andersen's life. He lived here for a long time and despite being gender fluid, he made many marriage proposals but never got married. Eventually he travelled, came to England, went to a lot of countries and became a travel writer. He's Denmark's number one hero, no question.